All right. So we've got Daybreak on the Support Your uh, Support Your Locals podcast today. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Happy to be here. What's up? It's good to hear. Uh, I'm I'm happy to have you on here. Uh, so tell me tell me like a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I guess I'm a local artist from Ogden. I guess I would I would say I fall under alternative hip hop. I don't really know how else to label it, but um, yeah, I uh, I work for I'm an artist under uh, at Darkest on Records, his local local record label here. Um, Arcadia is a member as well. Um, so yeah, I do I do a lot of different stuff. I'm a producer. Uh, I know how to DJ. I sing, rap, mix, master. Uh, you know, help people out on the business side if they need it, like within our group and everything. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the gist of stuff. It just depends on what I'm doing that day. Really. Oh, that's pretty sick. So you're like, you're just pretty well versed in everything. Yeah. I'm, I'm the guy that started the record label back a while ago. So, um, I had, I had aspirations for it back then. I knew what kind of what I was aiming for. So, um, now we're more at a place of, uh, presentation and, um, uh, you know, showing off the work kind of actually getting to it yeah that's tight i i know i seen like a few uh artists i've got um may or my however you say his name my. Yeah, yeah my i've got him on next week um which okay, is gonna sweet, be cool yeah. don't you guys also have coats as well yeah we got a whole we got a whole ton of people we got coats we got lobo uh dude from salt lake we got Sasha absolute phenomenal singer um there's there's a whole bunch of people that are real versatile from producers to just singers to everything and around in in the squad my and i'll say this just because i know he'll listen back to it but he produces majority of my my beats and my instrumentals and stuff we work really tightly together so yeah it's cool i look i'm looking forward to listening to to his little little segment on the podcast that'll be cool oh yeah he was uh he that's like that's why he hit me up to be on it because he was like uh well he heard the one with arcadia light and then he knew i was doing the one with you so yeah. he's like yo um but yeah you guys did a uh a collab album uh recently huh yeah we did um last summer i guess it was around like may may june kind of we went out to bear lake and we stayed there for like four days and just finished we had a couple songs on deck that we were like yeah we should finish this we really like these and then the rest were written there composed there everything you know while we were at the the, the spot and then you know the rest of the time was just kind of wrapping it up and getting a, a visual vision for it so um that was a cool experience i would encourage artists to take time themselves to like try something like that go see what it, go see what it's like to just pour everything out and create something because we did visuals we had a videographer come with us and he like he slept with us like he was there in the cut stayed up stayed up with us all night like <laughs> he was he was just constantly shooting doing stuff so it was a really cool experience but um yeah it's called a fall from grace and uh it's kind of just it's i write really personal music you know i write my feelings out and that's kind of how i how i cope and how i uh you know coexist with with people and express myself and you know kind of have a way to talk to people and and get involved i guess yeah i like that i like that a lot that's what i kind of try to do with my music as well is just like write really personal shit um i was listening to it though uh, there's some bangers on there like dreaming was like it was different it had kind of a different vibe from the whole rest of the thing but i still thought that shit went hard yeah um, for sure. there's a few other songs on there um that i really liked so i think i think that went that was pretty good uh project tell me a little bit more about like the like process of like writing your music just like what what goes into it or like and if you have any like specific examples for like songs of like things that you went through that you want to talk about yeah sure um well lately uh i just as growth grow personal growth as an artist personal growth is as a person too like it's it's easier for me to just walk into a studio catch a vibe and hit a song like if i if i really like the the instrumental or the music behind it and like it's just it's kind of a it's a it's a coin toss thing for me like i can walk in if my head immediately just starts 
like writing freestyling like I don't freestyle at all but my brain will just start rhyming stuff and you know coming up with rhythms so then I'm like oh yeah I could I could write on this I could I could do that and um really if it's me personally if I produce the beat then I kind of have a direction with it and it's kind of more together as a song I've got a I've actually I got a song coming out probably next month I think um called bluff and you know my my produce the what we i guess we produced the beat together sat down and that was like oh that was kind of a one take jake song it was just like wow i really like this i sat down like he literally went to get mcdonald's and i had it like recorded by the time he came back and was like hey send me that i need to finish it like so it really depends kind of depends on what my artistic drive is at the time but really consistently it's kind of it's feeling the vibe of a song like i i think i think everybody should walk in and and, and really feel an energy of, about you know the music that that you're possibly going to create and you know i really i really think it pulls me out of it so um yeah process wise that's kind of it like these uh, i guess it, well i guess i i will throw in it's a little different being able to work with a record label and like the people i got behind me because i, I can access different avenues of content like if i need just beats or you know i'm feeling in a funk i'd go down to baraka and bub studio um down in salt lake and i can just i can try something entirely new and i know that a lot of people are out in their bedroom you know just constantly on that grind and stuff like that so um, I think it really depends though. It depends on where your mindset, at, where your mindset's at and like where you, what you want to achieve, you know, musically. Yeah. I like that, man. I like that, uh, answer. I, uh, I bet it's gotta be pretty cool being able to work with all those different people. I, you've got a lot of like different, um, like styles under that, uh, label. So that's, that's gotta be fun. Just being able to like, you know, if you want to hop on a different style, just hit one of those guys up. Yeah, it really pulls different directions out of you, like unintentionally or, you know, there was a probably over a year ago, year and a half ago, right before COVID hit and everything we were, we had probably 20 people out of the studio, like every weekend, just being like, hey, let's make something. So it was really common to just walk in and hear like the start or the structure of a song. And then, you know, start to create from that, as well as like, oh, I've never heard something like this before but I could do something with it. I like that. So it really pushes your boundaries just really quickly. But um, yeah, I'm really interested to hear more of your music. I like your vocals. Like that's, I haven't heard, uh, I haven't heard a lot of whole, I don't know, like raw emo vocals like that on like new age music. I really like that. That's cool. That's one of like, that's, that's kind of like my biggest um inspiration is just like emo music like loud shouty like you know whiny so i'm kind of like borderline voice cracking vocals and shit like yeah, that yeah of course yeah that took me a while to kind of figure out i could do that though which was which was pretty tight like once i figured out oh i can like i can shout and kind of sound like decent so yeah, yeah. dude that's hard that's so hard like there's been many a time i've tried and <laughs> only a random dice roll has been decent that's that's kind of how it is for me like sometimes like i'll sit down and i'll try to do that same thing on the same like vocal style and it just doesn't work out and i end up like hurting my voice or and then there's just sometimes i sit down and i get i get lucky with it like i don't practice singing at all i don't have a great singing voice auto-tune is really my best friend dude same <laughs> that's the thing like i can sing casually give me a guitar like you know i'll sing okay but I have a super tiny nose and it had to get fixed when I was younger. And like, I'm super nasally 24 seven and I have plugins that literally have nasal correction. <laughs> so it's just, uh, it's one of those things, but I, I also think that everybody should try it or everybody should try like different, different styles, different things, like, you know, push yourself, test it. Um, you know, you, you've listened to music your whole life. So like, you know, you're going to pull inspirations and not realize you are, but eventually it'll come out pretty cool like i like that yeah exactly that's that's <clears throat> kind of the way that i like to think about it instead of um trying to like find one style and refine it like i try to be like a master of all whatever I try yeah to, like, jack jack of all trades yeah that's what that's what the phrase is yeah um, and just like fuck around with whatever i'm feeling at the time like i'll go from like hyper pop to like semi pop punk to like just straight up emo to like synth yeah. emo like a synth wave mixed with like that emotional emos uh vocals and shit like that 
Yeah, the dude, the dude I originally started the the label with, his name he goes by Alaska, and uh, he's he's one of my favorite people to work with just because he's like he's he's literally just throw a dart through a window and see what it hits. It's not even like the wall. It's so fur- much further past that. He's like, just gets a crazy tangent. He's like, let's do this. We're going to try this. And he makes all kinds of music. And really great dubstep. Really, He's really great at rapping. And he will lie to everybody's face about it. He's really good at singing. Lie to everybody's face about it. Like, But that versatility is something that I've always like, I don't know, inv- like p- impassioned in myself just because watching him do it, he does it so flawlessly. Like he literally just, just, throws up and it's amazing and i'm like wow that's really cool for you i'm gonna go write for an hour and hope that this is a good song (laughs) like i i I honestly i've been following alaska on twitter for a while he's he's one of the local artists that i've all like wanted to work with for a really long time but i'm like i don't want to like hit him up because i i am intimidated (laughs) easily by that shit like dude uh, alaska alaska is like one of the most intimidating people in person but he's a teddy bear for sure (laughs) don't don't let him front (laughs) all right but i'll have to i'll have to hit him up dude even hitting you up for this uh for this whole podcast i was like fuck i don't want to be like weird (laughs) nah dude like we think it's like we're we're in a place where we want anything local to pop like I want, I want any kind of art or anything to put somebody on and like somebody that falls in line with values or this and that. Like if you just click with the team, then you click with the team. Like it's not really a, it's not really like a process process. It's just kind of like how long you've been around and what do you do? And if it works and it's necessary, awesome. Like, and from that too, is like, we, there's so many of us that there's, oh, like there's a never ending amount of opportunities now like if somebody else gets a show you know they're gonna turn around and be like yo i have to fill a lineup so like who wants to play but at the same time to get to that show that dude had to be like yo can i use somebody's studio or can i work with you on this or like will you help me mix what i've made just anything like that so um yeah we're trying we're constantly trying to kind of like reach out and get into different avenues and personally for me just on the business side like podcast like you just uh, streaming like anything that's kind of secondary content I, I guess i'll call it i'll call it that because it's not like the upfront music or a music video you know yeah um the the secondary content side like we're we're just a startup somebody burns through your whole discography because they fuck with you what are they gonna go look for oh now you got interviews now you got you know other things coming you got a website that's got a blog on it or something like it kind of depends which route you want to go down but that's really where we're at necessity wise. And so I've, I'm glad everybody's pursuing those little things. And, you know, we got Jalen that's been trying to do some interviews internally because he's a really great interviewer and we just pushed him towards it. And we were like, Hey, you're going to do that. Cause it would be amazing. So awesome. And then, uh, you know, we had some with the 801 tracks, uh, guy, Jack, and then, uh, you know, slug mag had some stuff with mods. So like, it's the little things that are kind of starting to build up but um you know this is also kind of where it starts and like you know people get to listen to the conversation get to know the artist stuff like that like that's my favorite kind of content honestly yeah i feel like i feel like it's super important even though it's like the secondary stuff it's the stuff that people go to afterwards it's gonna be like that kind of stuff that really like builds that emotional connection uh Mm -hmm. with an artist well, I'm new. I'm new to hip hop and stuff too, and that's like a really rotating scene, just in general. So, like, obviously, alternative is a little different, but even so, it rotates a lot. People like Sewer Person, Garden, like they drop music really fast, right? And uh, yeah, and you kind of it's hard to keep up with. But like, the second I got to listen all through all of Vince Staples' album, like just Vince Staples, I was like, yo, I want to hear an interview. He's got to have done. He's got to done something it's like talking about this stuff like i I just immediately was like i want to know more so i listened like some 27 minute interview it's like that's half as long as the album and i'm willing to put the time in to listen to it so it's like it's kind of just where you hit and you know that's i think that's really important for people to to think about just aside from the music and the business side like if you're going to do this and pursue it anyway well you should probably think about it you know in a presentable manner right exactly (laughs) I, I personally love doing this too because like um I I mentioned it in the last episode I love the fucking local scene here like I love Ogden's music scene and just Utah in general 
and like yeah. being able to talk to you guys okay. and like uh just like figure out your creative processes like what kind of got you into it is all like super inspiring to me and i get like i get a lot of like creative um i don't know how to explain it but it, it it's inspiring <laughs> i guess yeah drive pushes you a little bit like, yeah oh, other people are doing it well i can do it too but that's yeah. honestly, see, that's the crazy thing. That's that's what almost not almost what started it all, but like what kind of got the ball rolling. Cause I had the idea, I had everything outlined. I was literally just getting the money to like license the LLC and everything. And then at the time, I had just found Coates as an artist on SoundCloud. And I I say just, but I mean I listened to him for probably four months, five months of him dropping music and stuff. And I hit him up and I just DM him, say, like, tell him what I thought, like, this is really good, or I didn't really like this so much or whatever. And he'd hit me back and have a conversation. And so I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, this guy's dope. But, you know, uh, a lot of people around here are either really pretentious or really secretive. And like, it's, it's kind of hard to crack open that shell either way you go about it. But Coates was more on the secretive side. So then eventually he was, he was going to drop, what is it, 97311, I think, is that, that EP. Um, and his manager jack hit me up and was like yo um you've been really cool with coats like he values your input and stuff he he just mentioned today like you, you should come listen to the ep early before it drops like we're throwing a little party and i was like holy crap you know that's in no way just personal dm like let's do this and so i was like okay maybe this this might be pretty cool and my wife was literally like yeah drop everything go i understand this will be cool and i went it was super cool just watching him vibe you know just seeing he's he's one of those people that you just get an immediate energy like the second you meet him it's like you're just like holy crap this, holy crap this kid's on a different level um but he was really uh genuine and authentic when i got to go meet him the first time and then we just didn't really quit talking after that and i told him like the day i met him and i told him up to like uh, literally six months ago like i'm not trying to sign you and i'm not trying to do whatever like i'm trying to put a dope ass local artist on so like whatever that relationship entails with you great but i'm going to support you how i can and then it kind of just kind of grew to this and like i literally i was at i was at a, i had to pick this mic up at his house like that's <laughs> so <laughs> like we're we're homies now it's just it's different so i think especially around here like the relationship side of stuff is really um kind of a driving thing and that's what inspires me too is like just the homies that have pushed me to get to that point like i think that's great what what inspired you why why did you start doing podcasts and stuff just because you were interested or i um honestly it's like a lot of there's a lot of things that kind of went into me deciding that i wanted to do this um I just really enjoy the local music scene and I feel like um there's a lot of smaller guys that don't get that don't get like any opportunities and like from personal experience me trying to like reach out and network I've gotten more negative reactions towards me trying to like talk to people and like yeah push out get myself out there and so that kind of drove me to be like well I I kind of want to see more positivity and more um you know, more people like reaching out and wanting to help people um, get out there and grow because the, the music scene is honestly like really kind of a lot of people think of it more as a competition instead of like we're in this together. Like if somebody else is on, that doesn't automatically mean you're going to get less followers or less listeners. So I just wanted to kind of be like a positive kind of force uh, as far as just the local music scene or just music in general yeah agreed that's literally where i started same exact thing because i grew up well did you ever go to mojo's no you know that i was, was no i i know what it is but i never got to go yeah so like I, obviously going to mojo's was kind of like a okay not i won't say visionary point because it's not like that's not exactly what i envision but an inspiration point just the fact that i could like as a 15 year old go see just some nasty ass death metal band on a wednesday for a two dollar ticket and a dollar coffee and i could choose what i got to do i could go talk to people i could go make friends or i could just sit and be alone like if i literally just wanted to sit and just listen you know people gave me my space so it was like it was just like this little haven of like oh there's people that do music here super dope super cheap and it was all ages and so it was like everybody just hung out there that was under 18 and, you know, that didn't actually go out and party and 
whatever or they were musicians like sammy brew i watched play there for the first time and that kid tours now like he plays south by southwest like that's you know i watched him get up on stage just as a 13 year old and i'm like wow this is crazy like that's cool so i, I kind of envision something like that later on for us once we get our own building and you know start moving that direction but even so that was kind of a that's kind of the goal just any any way is just bring some kind of positive like music is something that puts smiles on people's face i don't give a fuck what kind it is if you like it like you're grooving to it so you know music is something that can speak with everybody and i think that you know we should be using that for something that actually makes some you know people excited i don't care if your whole work week sucked if the only thing that matters you know within those four walls of that show is that people are smiling that they're you know they're not thinking about that you take them you kind of give them that escape for a second so you know everybody's looking for that everybody's struggling you yeah. gotta use it for for the best that you can i dig that man i'm glad we both have kind of like the same uh thoughts as far as that goes that's something i've always wanted to do is open like start my own record label and open like a an all ages venue or something like that with yeah. a record recording studio and just help people like get into it well the idea is kind of a fantasy factory like not to use a coin term of just like head assery but uh, more so of a one-stop shop you know we've got uh you know shop up front merch you got coffee stuff or you know just even soda fountains or like a crazy fizz thing or some you know whatever just uh anybody can enjoy and then venue space a studio upstairs for people that know about it and you know that kind of just keep the underground thing growing here because it's not really it doesn't really exist anymore when it comes down to like somebody that's a, a front runner for you know underground ogden shows it's it's always going to salt lake or it's always uh you know outsourced exactly i well there's there i know they're working on an all ages venue in ogden I don't I don't remember what it's called but like I I picked up on it a while back and I forgot what it's called. I'm following their Facebook page. So if I either, can remember, I'll let you know. It's <laughs> either you know. it's got to be it's got to be the Monarch cuz they were doing they've been doing some they're dabbling in the all ages thing or um shoot man, what's that startup? I literally talked with them. We went to a meeting. Um and we talked with them with Coates and they work with Indy Ogden and wow, I can't believe it's slipping me probably as well. I think we're talking about the same thing. Cause you said that, like, Oh, it's probably, it's gotta be that. I remember talking to them and yeah, I'm hoping for that. Like I've been waiting for like the full drop. Let's do it. You know, kind of thing. Cause a lot of the guys have clean music. <laughs> like they, they have options for, for clean music and underage shows. And I think that'd be like such a fun thing. I want to throw like a drive-in movie theater in our venue someday. I'll be like, yo, pull up. We got popcorn. We got soda. We got a projector on the wall. Let's do this. Like just the cool, like, like the craziest cool idea is just to get people involved and kind of like, Hey, what's up? You know, this is a fun thing, safe place for us to come. That'd be, that'd be so tight. If you ever do that, uh, let me know. Cause I will be there for that. Oh, I got you. I'm telling you, we got like, that's the thing. We got our website dropping like next week. We're going to have merchandise. We got new logos coming. We got everybody, every, we literally have a mountain of music that people are sitting on, like just from quarantine. Cause obviously that was like, well, this is our time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, music videos, uh, you know, we got more videographers, more graphic people. Like it's, it's the time for that, for that upward. Let's see, let's see what people kind of like, what they want to see. And like, uh, you know, Cody started getting some shows at some bar things. We got a Kilby show like August 11th, I think 12, something like that. Um, and Kilby's a great all ages venue. So I'm hoping to do something very similar to that up here for sure <laughs> like that's we're so close to that horizon we bring it up all the time we're like all right what else can we do what else can we do what else can we do because we you know we, that's 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 the dream right there yeah dude i'm i'm so there for that like if you guys decide to to do that i will give you like all the support that i can because like that's one thing i want to see more is especially for younger artists that can't go to like funk and dive and shit and play like they need they need somewhere to play too other than i don't know yeah well i market. think 
I even think as far as going as some kid like got a laptop for Christmas last year and his mom's like, yo, he needs producing lessons, but he's only 16. I need a safe place to leave him. Like, I got kids. I'm like, I got you, dude. Like, come learn. Like, let me talk to your mom. Bring her over. We'll show her the place. Like, whatever. I'm here for I'm here for for the next generation of gonna be incredible people. Like, you know, my guys, I I I my some of my guys are already gonna pop. They're already in that workflow. They're already like Cody's got those numbers as it is. It'll just keep climbing. So it's kind of it's kind of just a waiting game for us as we get to you know, experiment and figure out the different opportunities that fall in our lap unintentionally. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Uh, dude, on the subject of Coates, I got to gush over him for a second because, like, he's he's been, like, the one person that I've looked up to for the longest time as far as, like, Ogden artist goes because, you know, he's, like, he's out there. He's, like, doing it. Like, he got to open up for Bismarcky. He got his fucking, like, millions of streams. Like, it, that shit's crazy. So I think it's super tight that you get to work with him. Yeah, he's he's literally one of the most inspiring individuals I've ever met. Like, if if we could if we could take that gush no cap moment, like <laughs> that kid that kid really will just sit down, and look you in the face, and be like, "All right, what do you need to drive you? What do I need to help you to get that star in your eye?" I literally don't give a shit. Let's do it. And he he's not the person that'll ever say, "No, nah, that's not possible." He'll say, "All right, let's figure out how to get there." And he's just man he he works harder than anybody i've literally watched i watched i watched <laughs> i left the studio on like friday night when lobo showed up with like a 30 rack and by sunday morning when i came back to get some of my stuff so i could work on music they both came out not wearing shirts just hair fucked up and they were like hey we we made something and i was <laughs> like this is a very weird experience like i saw this <laughs> okay why what is it and they were like it's like an ep man they made like a whole ass project in two and a half days like just easy so and like coats will freestyle for an hour like you can just cycle beats just put a playlist on and homie will speak <laughs> and it's perfect like he's he's just he is that talented he is that good and he is that confident it's well deserved but um you know, like I said previously, like I never intended to sign him or do anything. I was just like, I want to be your friend. I love you. I love your music. Like you're so positive, so inspiring. You're so truthful. You're so just everything, like just kind of that, that kind of guy. And, you know, he really puts the anything is possible in people's heads and like, you know, shows you that it is possible. So, um, you know, uh, big shouts to Coates <laughs> and, and just what he's done for the label, where he's at, what he, what he intends facts dude tell him i said what up uh yeah dude i'll get you an interview don't worry uh, don't even worry about it i'll i'll talk to him I'd he'll even, be he'll I, be interested i didn't even i didn't even like i that would be tight i won't say no to that but <laughs> nah dude respect respect goes where it's given for sure especially with cody like he he's he's interested in a conversation with anybody whether it's five minutes or 50 minutes yeah so yeah, any any opportunity just to talk about what he loves and tell people out what he's doing, like he's he's open to. So I'll put in a good word for you. <laughs> for sure. I appreciate that. You don't gotta do that, yeah. but I appreciate that. But uh let's go what what kind of like do you have like any life moments uh that you feel like have inspired you to want to like do music? Oh dude, okay, get this. Um so we wrote we wrote the song Memory Lane um from a fall from grace and it's it's like it's really like a ballad type song and uh i i had just gotten back my my grandpa died last last uh last march and we went to um we went back to oklahoma that's where my family's from and by that time you know my kids are more grown up so they're meeting my cousin's kids and um, you know, seeing my grandparents and it, it was just kind of an experience like, oh, well, I guess I have to preface that too. I'm adopted. <laughs> so like the first blood person I ever met in my life was my son. And so just kind of watching him go through things that I remember is a cool experience. But um, we wrote that song Memory Lane. And I, I talked about playing basketball on the court there in Oklahoma, basically. And that's where I used to play basketball when my dad would take me on vacation. 
you know, and I could see, I could see the cracks in the court and it's looked the same since they've lived there. And it's just like, it was kind of just a euphoric moment of like, yo, I'm out here chilling with my kid while he's playing basketball where I used to play. And like, you know, he's just having a good time. He's just with his dad. He's not, there's literally zero stress. He's out at 11 PM as a five-year-old. <laughs> like he's, he is living his life. And so, you know, we wrote that song and, uh, you know, it was a good emotional moment, but then he sang it back to me when we were rolling in the car. He said, Hey, play it. He said, Hey, play you and Miley, play, play, play you, play that song you and my made. And I was like, what do you mean? He said, close your eyes da, 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 and started singing the, literally singing the melody. And I, I literally started, I started crying like in the car, we're driving on the interstate and I'm like tearing, like, cause I couldn't believe it. I was like, yo, he's singing back my song that I like wrote about him. Like that's, and he doesn't know that now, but you know, later when he's older and stuff, I get to go, go back and listen to it and be like, yo, I, I understand what all this is written about. Like, that's crazy. So there's, there's a lot of things from previous that were so negative and like, uh, I guess I'll just not want a negative example. The song terrified from my first project I wrote because I, I had, I had to have a really deep heart to heart with my wife about my depression. And I didn't know, like, it, it really blindsided me that depression was a thing and that it existed and that I had it. And I was diagnosed with ADD there's just a lot of stuff from my childhood that didn't, that didn't get taken care of that I had to handle as an adult. And, you know, it came to terms with me, you know, talk, oh, just constantly dealing with suicide and stuff. And I always have a, just, it's Utah. I always have a gun on me. So like I, I had to sell them all, you know, uh, move in with my parents. Like, it's just a really rough time, but you know, she, it was one of those moments where she was like, Hey, like, you're still you, I still love you. This is great. Like whatever, um, we'll get you through this. And I'm sorry that I didn't understand it before. How can I help? Just so many different positive things came out of a moment that I was literally terrified to have and that I thought about for so long. And, uh, you know, I wrote the song. I got to show it to my wife. I got to show it to my friends. And that ultimately that was one that kind of stemmed the project, honestly. Um, shout out Laska too for absolutely bodying that that feature because it, it made the song and it's absolutely gorgeous and he captured everything that I could have wanted to say. So um, yeah, I, I would encourage people write about your life. I can actually get down and dirty with it, you know, get, you know, feel yourself, you know, late at night, write about something that's important to you because it'll, it'll help. It'll, it'll, uh, it'll get a lot of positive out of a negative that you thought <laughs> for sure. Big, big time. Those are actually both like super beautiful stories, especially the one about your kid. I was like, damn, I want to cry right now. That's like, dude. So it was, it was literally like, uh, I, that was a moment I never knew would happen. You know, that's not something I expected when I even th thought about a record label while my wife was pregnant. Like it was, it, you know, this is years of, of work and thought going into the making and now he's there you know, singing it back. Someday I'll get to take him to show. Someday I'll be like, Hey, this is what I do. And that, that'll be a cool experience too. Um, you know, but at the same time, that's a song like I, you know, somebody, I can't remember who told me that, but like, they, they were like, no, dude, I think it's cool. You do music. Cause songs are like a staple in people's memory. It doesn't matter. Like what, um, it doesn't like matter what the genre is or what they were doing or this or that. Like if it was a bad thing and it's a sad song, it got them through it. If it was a great thing and it was super energetic, you know, it's something that they party to or drive to. They'll, they'll never forget that song and they'll go back and listen to it again. And they'll feel those emotions all over again. So um, yeah, I just think that's, it's a really cool thing to be able to, to kind of put my family and my friends and my music and like, you know, kind of have a little bit of a subliminal give you your rose kind of, situation yeah dude i really i honestly i really like that that's the kind of stuff that i look forward to like experiencing when i get a bit older have kids and stuff like that like things like that would just be super awesome um but uh, yeah i really like your view on that um let's see I, I don't know I don't know if you could tell but I don't, I don't have like any questions or anything written down so I kind of have just like winging it this whole time. <laughs> no, dude, you're good. We're chatting. I'll fucking I'll start asking you questions, bro. I ain't scared. Uh, if you if you if you want to, that's cool too. <laughs> uh, that's why I just know some people have like 
you know, the difference between a podcast and interview is like a really fine line. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. really it depends on if people are smoking <laughs> and drinking or just being like, hey, fuck you. That's it's totally a podcast. and You're just vibing. If you're only doing questions, it's an interview. So, yeah. like, it's fine just to be hanging out and talking just because I think it's more authentic and like it's not like a you know you watch movie you watch movie stars do interviews and it's just back forth back forth back forth this was funny bam and then you're done in a five minute segment and it's more like this kind of thing like i go listen to my favorite artists talk for as long as they want to i don't care i will listen i will eat that shit up i need to know about you i need to know why you do what you do like i need i want the insight so um i just think it's fun talking to people i'm like that when it's not music work whatever like just talking i want to know people's stories i want to know i want to learn from people i feel that that's that's uh that's where i'm at too i just like i just want to talk to people especially after like covid and everything and like not talking to people i work from home now so it's weird i don't talk to people that much uh yeah oh yeah all the ton of the ton of the label homies are on that vibe they're like get me out of this house okay <laughs> i work here i sleep here i i i make music here in a different room <laughs> i need to get out for a night like um how old are you i am i'm actually 20. if you don't mind saying okay yeah, cool. i just 20. yeah cool yeah so yeah, I'm, that's, uh, dude, you're right there. You'll be coming to bar show soon, dude. Don't even worry. I know. I only got like six months left. Uh, Funk and Dive told me that I could hit them up when I turned 21, but then they blocked me like right after. So I, I'm confused on like what. <laughs> it might just, it might be an underage thing because they're like, I don't know. They're so weird about that. Just in general, like every venue, they're just so like weird about that. Yeah. Same with Miley though, dude. He just turned 21 and he's like, Hey, I can get bar shows now. It's time to fill the lineup. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I've actually, we're going to go play that. We got that Kilby show and the funk and dive show in the same week. And like low key, I have to go play down with my, he's like, Hey, you're going to come sing a song with me. I'm like, I don't really want to do that uh <laughs> i'd rather come to the show and watch you that's really cool <laughs> but i'm trying to think too what other venues there aren't really any other great venues up in ogden that are under 21 besides there. like i guess the amphitheater and stuff yeah there's really not and oh well i don't got that much longer left but it's still cool to like have other people because i feel like i feel like people that like my music are probably a little bit younger maybe less like i don't know but i guess we'll see how things go i think that's kind of how it is in general though is everybody's always just a hair younger because they're finding your music on a different curve you yeah. know and like the artists i like i feel like i found late compared to a lot of people that listen to them but yeah I also have like a really different taste in music too. Cause I come from like a metal background and I, my dad limited the music I was allowed to listen to as, as a kid and stuff. So once I, once I figured out that like emo hit, like emo rap and like alternate, like hip hop was a thing heard people like garden and stuff. I was like, no way. All right. So I know what kind of beat I'm making when I get home. Cause I love lo-fi and I love like that kind of rap it. Just everything about that. Just anything in that genre. I'm like, dude, I want to hear it. I'm here for it. I want to try it. Just gets me going. <laughs> I got that vibe from you, definitely. Dude, Garden, I fucking, I love Garden. I love his music. He's a crazy cool guy. Uh, I got to talk to him one time on, on Omegle, if you know what that is. Oh, yeah. Really? Um, yeah, I kind of pissed him off. <laughs> I was Why? Like, I was like, yo, dude, like me and you, we're going to make a song together one day. Like, you're going to have no choice. Like, I'm going to blow up and like, you're going to like want to work with me. Like, that's my drive. And then he like, he kind of got all like quiet and weird. And then was just like, all right, fuck you. And then left the, the chat. That's weird. Yeah, I was like, damn, OK. I mean, we're still going to make a song together, but uh, fuck you, too. <laughs> <laughs> like you like just wait man i know i'm hoping i when i went to the show to see him well that's, that's the thing dude that like garden like literally saved my life like i was at i was at like the worst of worst places when i started finding that kind of music and like you know they artists like that they just talk about like where their where their headspace is at and 
you know, for, for a lot of us, it, it's okay to talk about it when it's negative. It's okay to talk about, you know, the, the bad shit you think and say it and then get over it and move past it. Let's keep going. And, uh, you know, he, he says things all the fucking time that I wish I could have written. There's just so many, there's so many different ways that, that he says things. And I'm like, bro, that's, I've thought that 10 million times. Thank you for putting it that way. Like, holy shit. So I'm kind of hoping like I can do that someday with my music. Like that's kind of the more of the crowd I want to hit anyway. But um, yeah, he was, I met him at that show and I gave him, I gave him one, I gave him my project on a USB and I was like, Hey bro, like, well, for, I, you know, I, I turned, I was like, Hey, like you're Nick, you're garden. Right. And he turned around he's like, yeah, man, what's up? And I was like, yo, like, you saved my life. And I just had to tell you that, like, before just anything. Like, I, that's, I had to get that out. Yeah. And he's like, oh, my God. And, like, gave me a hug. And I was like, you know, I was like, I'm freaking out. I'm panicking a little bit, which is fine. But um, literally this project wouldn't exist and I wouldn't be standing here. And my kids probably wouldn't have a father, like, without what I heard you make. So thank you at least for that. And like, I'm super excited to see you play. It's been a dream of mine. Like, Oh my God. And he took it and he's like, wow, that's, I've literally never had anybody fucking say that before. Like that's, that's really the craziest thing. And we got to talk for a minute. And I even mentioned that, you know, we talked to him after the show. My talk to him was like, yo, you should come play a show with us. Like we could get a show at Kilby and probably sell that hoe out if you came like, honestly. So he's like, yeah, definitely. So we've kind of talked to him you know, here and there, and then COVID happened. So now we're kind of waiting for the ball to get rolling again. Now he's coming back in February with convo and sewer person. We already got tickets to go to that. So I'm like, we hit them up to open <laughs> if they need openers. <laughs> I'm trying to just talk to him again and be like, Hey bro, thank you. Like my walk in my life is so much better. And like, thank you for continuing your music walk. Cause it's grown with me. And I, I can't express that over five years of time. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad we both kind of have like I think Garden has had a pretty big impact on my life too. Maybe not maybe not quite as big as like yours cuz I I don't know. I discovered him when I was when I was like getting sober and like Yeah. He kind of helped me like the way he like you said the way he like writes and the way he like the way he just puts his words out there like he he does it so like elegant elegantly and like i'm like damn i wish i could like express my feelings like that just normally like talking like yeah um, so yeah he helped me a lot especially with like staying sober and and shit like that just like being able to listen to his music like his music like got me high like that's how good it was it like got me yeah. high yeah well, and he's, uh, which it's funny, I, I li when I listen, I listen to a couple live streams, like he doesn't even smoke anymore, even though like he used to rap about that all the time. And it's just like, just in general, you know, people got to be willing to, to watch their artists grow. You know, you got to be willing to watch them go through new phases or maybe make some subpar stuff while they try new things or they themselves get sober, you know, whatever it is. But it's like even even everything that he writes outside of that is such like a, it's a comforting it's a comforting way. It makes me feel like, oh, you know, I'm not alone. I'm not the only person that that thinks like this sometimes. And, you know, I wish I didn't. But, hey, if there's two of us, then maybe it ain't so bad. And I know that's kind of like it's just kind of his thought process on like, you know, he writes about shit that matters to him. Like he writes about what he's thinking and just how that is i think he's got a really beautiful way of doing different perspectives yeah you know if if you've heard of something before or you've heard of a a subject or something or how one thing was written the way that he kind of ties it in and and uh flips it you know at the end is 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 just really unique like i wait what's he what is it the something all my oh man now i'm gonna forget it now i know that song word for word but we're nervous and we're on a podcast, so we can't remember. I don't even remember what my name is right now. <laughs> I feel that. Um, he says something about like his the enemies of the dude that's sleeping in his cot, and it's him. He's talking about himself. Like at the very end of the song, he's like, "I'm the guy that's causing the problems." And I was just like, "Dude, come on! That's such a great way to say that." Like just all the time, so creative. You know, loving you goes goes so much deeper than just taking off my belt. Come on come on that's come on 
I agree. You're talking, I, you're talking about perfect, like perfect delivery of a different perspective. It's, it's really intriguing to me. I can't tell you how many times I've like sat down and I've been like, okay, I'm literally just going to copy garden. I'm going to make a song that just sounds like garden. And then like, it sounds like shit. I'm like, God, your delivery, your writing, like everything, like it's so unique to you that like, I, no matter how hard I try to copy it, it's not going to (laughs) work. Yeah, I know. I always did that when I was, when I was first learning to produce and everything, I'd always pull up my favorite artist songs, be like, all right, I'm going to just start copying this and see what what my direction comes out of it. Cause I didn't have any inspiration or didn't have like, I don't know the process I want to do to go about this. So I just have to like, listen and pull things from something. And, um, you know, it was, it was really his, his flow is something that is just, is different to me. Cause like his real, like his speaking voice isn't, isn't like that low gravelly tone that you hear him like rap with, but he also speaks so slowly and it's perfectly on beat. And that's what, that's what shakes me. It's like, no matter how much I use a metronome or how much just anything of like, I'm really good at rhythm. I'm a rhythm guitar player by trade. Like <laughs> I, I understand that very well, but like just where a word belongs in a beat is, is something he's mastered. <laughs> that one's so fucking hard for me. Like, I don't even like, I don't even pay attention to any of that when I'm doing my vocals. I'm just like, fuck, hopefully it sounds good. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, that's, <laughs> you should see my work. Cause it's like, it's like watching it. It's like, it's like those videos where a train goes through an entire drift of snow, except a song pops out at the other side. <laughs> it's really wild. Like he just, he really does. He's like, yeah, this is cool. Just pulls out a piano and 30 minutes later, you've got something you probably weren't expecting. And like some songs he's yelling in the background. And then like, which I imagine his mother is like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> he's alone (laughs) like he's it's 2 a.m he's by himself like just screaming but in the back and then auto like he he goes through his whole process and it's like that belongs there that's so good like how did you you know little sato golf clap a little bit (laughs) and he's like i don't know man i just make music i'm like what do you want to do today he's like make music like you're so agitating like give me a goal (laughs) He's like, yeah, man, let's make some music. <laughs> All that's, right, man, fine. That's kind of how I am, dude. I'm like, I want to make music, sit down. I, I, It takes me like a long time to come up with something like good. But I'll be like, all right, I want to make music, spend 30 minutes just banging random keys on my keyboard, and then finally come up with something that sounds cool and then just like change directions 10 times throughout the process. So it's a... Uh, who are some of your big inspirations for, I guess, your your genre type or like, you know, the music you actually make, make, not just what you listen to? I I pull a lot of inspiration from like a lot of different places. Like my main thing is like I want to I want to mix things that shouldn't mix. Um, oh, yeah. OK. So uh, I think just like the whole emo rap scene in general is really big, like Garden, um 93 feet of smoke i really like his vocal delivery so i try to i try to borrow from that and then like midwest emo bands so like um i don't know if you've ever heard of them but like marietta camping in alaska uh bands like that yeah sure no see now that's you you need to send me music later because i need more i need more like actual emo music to listen to i'm so bad i'm so bad at finding like I don't know, find it. I guess I'll put the, the, the quotations of finding new music just because I let Spotify do it for me while I work. And I go to work, put my headphones in and just fucking smack a playlist. And they're like, oh, this is good. This is good. Just, you know, playlist it on my stuff so I can go back to it later. But, um, you know, I, I've i just always put put my favorite bands from back in the day on a radio and then I'll listen to that for eight hours. And then I find a bunch of new bands that do that similar style. So, <coughs> yeah, I fuck, I fuck with Midwestern sound. Like you. August, August burns red, Texas in July. That fucking that metal that uh, back in the day, that was my shit, dude. Oh my god. I, I need you. need more emo music. I will literally send you my entire playlist. I think it's got like 20, 30 hours of music on it. Um, yes, please. Because I can't, I can't do that. Like if I don't, 
I have to like find music on my own. Like I hate when like algorithms like recommend it to me, even if it's a good song. I'm like, oh, I gotta skip this and get to a song that I know. Oh yeah. Well, like I find myself being like, I get, I get, I get bored with new music quickly, and I, I literally just need to hear something different, or you know, I guess a podcast, ironically. <laughs> but it's like, uh, it's easy to be to kind of put put some fingers in a new genre for me. Just because, like, like I'm not, I'm not huge into hyper pop, but Laska is. So once he first started making stuff, I was like, oh, I, should, I you know, just I need to go find artists. Like, well, I really fuck with Glaive. I don't know if that's full blown, whatever, but I fuck with Glaive. So, um, yeah, just in, the, in any introduction to that style and sound, it was like, oh, just shuffle this shit and we'll see what pops up. So, uh, yeah. Plus, back in the day when I was DJing too, it was just like go on SoundCloud and hit Max for six hours. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna create dig. <laughs> uh-huh. Dude, I'll put you I'll put you on a bunch of different shit. My my music taste is like all over the place. Um so there's like some indie emo, some like Midwest emo, fucking early 2000s emo, uh pop punk. Uh I don't know yeah, if you heard about Hot sure. Mulligan. I recommended I recommended Hot Mulligan to Arcadia Light as well, but like Yeah, I definitely know who Hot Mulligan is. <laughs> such a good band. For sure. I'm going to yeah. see them in November and I'm so fucking excited amazing where at uh i think it's uh i think it's at kilby i think Oof, dude i just i'm i'm so down for kilby shows now because it's such it's got like you just know those are going to be intimate cool shows <laughs> so like anything that's that's a bigger artist coming out of kilby i'm like i want to go <laughs> i right. want to see that show i'm getting the vip tickets and i'm gonna be like yo I'm going to sit there. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to be like, yo, you guys got to listen to my music. I'm not going to leave until you guys listen to my music. I'll be that guy. I will be yeah. that guy. Say, I'm a local guy, dude. We do this out here. <laughs> Just give them I a bad taste like for all local uh, local artists. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of local artists that do that off the rip. So mm, musically, too, I guess. But yeah. I feel like I feel like Ogden's a weird place when it comes to music. Like you said, everyone's either pretentious or secretive. So like, people well, super either... indie, indie too. Like very yeah. very hipster indie. Dude, we got a weird weird music scene. Uh, let me put you on. Have you ever heard of Super Young Adult? He's a local artist. He's my favorite local artist right now. Super Young Adult. Now that sounds familiar. Now have I checked him out? I don't know. He's so fucking dope. I think you should definitely check him out. Um, give me, give me some recs. We're we're going, uh, we're going a little bit low on time. We're almost at the hour mark. Give me some local recs to check out. Local recommendations. Um, one is Elon Blase for sure. He's not even he's not even a darkest Don kid affiliated or nothing. I just I fuck so heavily with that dude's music, and. Uh, you know, Tango, Tango Wood Blur, whatever. What's that other project too? He just had come out. He's, he's just one of those artists that really hits, hits a peak for me every time. Um, I really like Benjamin Major too out of Salt Lake. He's another, another rapper. Um, let's see, I guess out of the, I mean, everybody out of the squad, <laughs> honestly, because I, I would encourage people to go check out the different genres. Like we got, you know, Darkest Dawn's got dance people, just any kind of hip hop, old school, new school, trap, like, you know, my style, that sad boy stuff. There's multiple people. We got, um, you know, uh, Sasha sings and does sing on dance music. It has features with other people and stuff. Like there's a lot of really good talent that, um, you know, people, it's unexpected for sure. You know, you go roll through the playlist and it's like, yo, some of these people make different music and it's, this is crazy. Um, yeah, beyond that though, always go check out Coats because if anybody's gonna put you on a new local artist and positivity, it's that boy. There we go. Thanks. Uh, do you have? I'm gonna give you the rest of the time just to like promote, like literally whatever you want. Shout out whoever you want. Um, just say whatever you want. Well, shout out you. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to come on, talk. You know, 
pick your brain a little bit and i like having the outside the outside view of uh of our local scene and kind of what other people view it as or you know people that in different genre bases you know how they feel um included or not so uh yeah i appreciate the opportunity let me come you know talk about myself talk about my friends um i guess beyond that shout out darkest Dawn records go check out darkest Dawn records.com uh i don't when is this do when is this going to come out do you know um i was i'm actually gonna upload i don't it. care it's perfect your time great awesome <laughs> i'm think i'm thinking about it i normally i upload it like right afterwards but i kind of want to start scheduling it out more so that way it's like uploaded at a time that people are gonna watch it so yeah i'll probably upload it sometime in the morning get a little promo too. put a little put a little thumbnail up say hey this will be out at this time whatever and uh we'll we'll we'll, we'll put some retweets on that let's go um yeah for sure the uh yeah, that we we will have the website up and running. We'll have merchandise coming out. A lot, a lot of our artists are going to be dropping music, new videos, you know, merchandise to go along with it. We got kind of got a whole rollout thing going. Um, so yeah, I'd encourage everybody to go check it out there. If not, hit us up on Twitter. And uh, if you're a local artist and make music, come work. <laughs> All right, let's go. Um, anything else you wanna you wanna shout out? Uh, anything else like that? Um, I don't think so. I guess my name's Daybreak, D A E B R E A K. Uh, you find me on all platforms. You know, again, I appreciate you, bro. This has been really cool. We'll keep in contact. I'm looking forward to chatting. Well, of course, man. I honestly, I loved uh, having this conversation with you. I love learning like about um your kind of experience and your journey a little bit. Uh, gave me a lot of inspiration straight up like especially the the stories that you had to tell about like behind those songs and shit like that like that that gave me a lot of inspiration so i appreciate that yeah bro um i guess i guess that i'll make that my final my final shout out take care of your mental health anybody that listens to this like suicide depression anxiety whatever it is that that it, that it is that grips you you know talk about it with your friends get yourself in a safe space and you know learn how to work on it and grow um, it's super important. Suicide's really bad in Utah. And, um, that's something that, that I think needs to be absolutely addressed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, beyond that, just take care of yourselves, go find people that, that will take, that will love you for you and, uh, you know, try to do something good. I love that. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, and thank you again for hopping on today, man. Um, yeah, I'll make sure to keep in contact. I'll send you, I'll send you that playlist. I'll send you some music recs as I get them because I'm always finding new music. So I got you. Um, yes, yes, much appreciated. If you want to check out Darkest Dawn Rex, I'll have and Daybreak's music. I'll have everything out in uh, all the links in the comment. I mean, not the comment, the fucking description. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, thanks for coming on, man. You have a good rest of your night. Yeah, dude, absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity. Much love. <laughs> Later. Peace.